it's Rob here today, and I'm here to introduce you to my new best friend. This is the Cafe Lot robot, and this is how I make my coffee now. In our last video on Nadia and Rob, our YouTube channel, we showed the pure beauty of this machine. It's a really nice poetic piece about the beauty of espresso, and I thought, this one, I'd like to explain the process a little bit more and some of the thinking behind what I'm doing. Uh, now, my, my old best friend, this big, beautiful, super automatic Seiko machine, which stood by me for over 20 years, reliably producing coffee after coffee, finally was forced into retirement by a fatal grinder error. So I thought I'd take the opportunity to move from sort of one button, you know, one button press to get everything I needed to the fully manual coffee route. And I did a little research, looked around at different things, and I decided I just couldn't resist the cute quality of the Cafe Lot robot. It's just such a neat design. It's a retro design. It's based on something that Fiema came out with in the 50s, I believe. Um, and it's a completely hand-powered espresso machine and I decided to go the whole nine yards and get a hand-powered grinder for this for making my coffee as well just go completely manual instead of my old super automatic so this was a chance for me to explore some of the nuances of espresso because I do love my coffee and I thought now's a chance to go play so let me just explain how I'm going about this. First off, I have a shout out. Um, I really want to thank Justin at Cafune Boutique, which is a Montreal based company that sells coffee, uh, coffee making equipment, coffee drinking equipment, everything to do with coffee. They have a fabulous online store. And what's really amazing is he gave me the sort of personal input in terms of pairing this um, Kino Phoenix grinder with the, the Cafe Lot robot because this, this grinder has a great, um, very easy to adjust system that allows you to make very, very fine adjustments easily to tune the grind to whatever coffee you happen to be putting through the machine. So it works really well. It's nice and easy to use. And I'll show you everything involved in it in just a minute. This unit, and I'm just going to turn it towards me because it's a little easier to operate that way. So let me explain just a little bit about how this, this little espresso maker works. You have these two arms which activate a piston and the piston you can see here silicone ring fits perfectly into this brew chamber and the brew chamber holds both the coffee and the water and the piston forces it through and it goes into this holder, which is an open holder, so you have an open bottom uh, chamber. And that's it, it makes an espresso. These arms, driven by my arms, create the pressure to brew the espresso. So, let me show you how I go about doing this. First off, to start, I like to obviously measure my coffee going in, right? So, I actually take the little brew chamber, drop it on my scale, <clears throat> and I'll have links in the, no in the description for all of these little bits of equipment. I'm getting my coffee from a local, what do you call, roaster, roaster, yes. <sighs> I'm getting my coffee from a local roastery in Kensington Market here in Toronto. It's the Moonbeam Coffee Company, which has been around since the 90s. And Alan, the owner, has been really helpful in terms of directing me to a blend that really suits my taste. I are using what's called Midnight Darkness, which isn't really as dark as, all, as it sounds. It's sort of just barely past what's called second crack when you're roasting. So it's, a, it's on the lighter side of dark, but I really, I really, really like it. So these are the beans. So now I'm going to measure my beans. I've been running about 18 and a half grams of beans. So I'll measure those out. I find that's working really well for me. And I'm looking to extract about 
36 to 37 grams of coffee. So I'm now at 18 and a half. Yeah, that was a little high, so I'll take a bean out. There we go. And one thing I picked up from James Hoffman is I squirt just a little bit of just pure water into the beans, just mist in a little bit. And what that does is it prevents static from building up in the grinder and causing all the grinds to come out all over the place. So this just pours into the grinder. This grinder is set for, in the, in the terms of this grinder, it's 1.7, like a full uh, revolution and 0.7 of a revolution off of where the grinder blades touch. And I just grind away. Doesn't take very long, it's sort of a nice little arm exercise in the morning or any time of day, because I drink espresso all day long. There we go, I can feel it getting close to the end. And you can hear when all the beans pass through. There we go, and I just give it a little tap just to knock down any beans that might be in there. And that's it, totally clear. That goes into the receiver. Coffee goes in there, there we are. Now I just shake it a little bit to distribute it. And this is the tamper that comes with the Coffee Lot robot. Now I've customized it a little bit by putting about a cork and a half full of uh, wine, uh, wine bottle cork, about one and a half inside here, just to give me something to sort of rest my hand on. So I can tamp this down and I give it a spin just to leave a clean surface on the coffee. So the coffee's inside there, and then this distribution screen just sits there. Now, I put that back on my scale, and I wanna measure my water going in, because I found that that's the easiest way to regulate the balance between espresso out and espresso in. So for my 18 and a half grams, I want to get out about 36, 37 grams of espresso. And if I put in between 55 and 57 grams of water, that seems to just perfectly balance out. So I'm going to go get some boiled water and we'll make espresso. While the water is coming to a boil, I just want to say that, you know, I've had this machine for about three months and it's taken me a little while to sort of figure out the balance of which blend I want to use, what, how much coffee and the grind that'll extract the best sort of flavor without over extracting. This setup has given me an opportunity to really dive into some of the details of making espresso and getting the optimum flavor for my palate out of this machine. Now, interestingly enough, Nadia is now making a coffee for herself every morning, and she actually uses a different blend of beans. She's using Moonbeam's Espresso Blend, and she actually tweaks the grind a little bit to suit her, her taste in coffee. So it's a beautiful system because it's very easy to adjust and tweak to your particular tastes and flavor for coffee. I like a slightly darker, richer roast, and that requires a slightly finer grind to really extract the flavor from it. So it's been an evolution, but it's really been a fun exploration and uh, a chance to really dig into the details of making espresso. I think the water's almost ready, so I'll be right back. Okay, so my water has reached a boil. And one thing I love about this machine is you really don't have to do any extra work to do temperature management. It maintains its temperature beautifully. So I have my chamber here. I'm going to fill it up with somewhere around 55 to 57 grams of water. Fill it nice and slow so I don't go over. There we are. Perfect. So now I have the perfect amount of water. I just lift the arms and slot this chamber into place. And I like to drop my scale on so I can measure my output. There we go. I'll turn this so you can see what I'm doing. And hit tear. And now what I'd like to do is a bit of a pre-wet of the grounds. So I just bring it down till I get the first drop or so coming through. 
and then I wait for as long as my patience holds out. <laughs> there we go. There's a drop. I just back up and wait just a little bit. Make sure the grinds are totally infused. And then I apply my pressure up to about eight bars or so. And I tend to judge by the flow coming out. That's what I love to see, this nice, even flow. There we go. And I try and keep the pressure nice and steady using the pressure gauge as a guide. And it makes this beautiful crema. And then when I reach the bottom, I just let the pressure drop down naturally. And I'm watching my output to get to 36 or so. And then I pull up. And I can take my chamber off. And look at that. That is a beautiful espresso. Gorgeous crema, beautiful top and it's just waiting to be sampled. Oh, that's beautiful. It's rich, round, a little bit on the sweet side, still has a nice acidity. That is a beautiful espresso. So thank you, Cafe Lot. It's a great machine and uh, I hope you enjoy. Mm. Oh, while I'm enjoying my espresso, remember, subscribe, like, and hit the bell button so you'll know when we next release a video. Enjoy.